our DAO Hacks workshop day one. Uh, we have David here from Lens, who will be doing a workshop on building on Lens protocol. So David will be taking questions in the Zoom chat. So if you have any, drop it in there um, and he'll try to answer them throughout the call. But if not, um, he'll definitely address them at the end of the workshop. Uh, and with that being said, um, I'll hand the mic off to you, David. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Uh, so my name is David. Uh, I'm a product. I'm a social product product manager for social products over here at Ave Companies, which includes Lens Protocol. Uh, and super excited to give you guys an overview of the Lens Protocol, as well as some ideas on things you can build with it, uh, and how to work with our released, uh, recently released Lens API. Um, so why did we build Lens Protocol? I think before we can even understand what's going on in the system, we need to know how we got here. Uh, we all know that Web two social media is broken. Um, you know, we're trapped into using these platforms that we don't really necessarily like. They, they have all of our data, they're selling it, we're not really getting much out of it. And there's three kind of big problems. The first, user data is not portable. I can't bring my videos that I've posted on TikTok over to YouTube or Instagram Reels or any other service. Um, I'm kind of locked where I'm at. Um, and if they choose to kick me off a platform, I can't then take my audience, take my content with me. That's a huge risk for creators. Networks are selling my data and I'm seeing zero upside. For Facebook, you are the product, you're not the user. Their, their, their users are advertisers. Um, and that's kind of who they design around first and foremost. And lastly, the data is centralized. Uh, when it's centralized, it's controlled by a singular entity. Uh, we've all seen how that's turned out. Um, tons of hacks. And, and the last thing I need is more spam email uh, to, to, to go through. And so with Web3 Social, we're bringing the power back to the users. We're empowering creators uh, and, and we're doing it uh, through Lens Protocol. It's a new protocol to allow developers to build social apps, tools, and other applications uh, on a composable, decentralized social graph that allows you, the developer, to focus on user experience and building a great application rather than user acquisition and building up this graph. The Lens Protocol for the, for the creator side is gonna empower you to own the links between your community. And, and this is going to be able to bring your content from platform to platform, allowing you to monetize everywhere. Now, I think this is really key. We're going from companies owning data to users and creators owning their data and having it interplay with the rest of Web3. You can bring all your NFTs, you can connect out to all of the DeFi applications and everything else that's yet to be invented. And the way this works is our social protocol ecosystem revolves around an NFT infrastructure layer. Uh, we make heavy use of NFTs. And this isn't like the board Ape NFTs. These are NFTs as powerful smart contracts. We have a profile NFT, represents your profile. Uh, it looks pretty similar to working with ENS or Unstoppable if you've worked with either of those before. I'll have my profile NFT, let's say it's at David. Um, it's got some metadata that I can put in. So I can say, you know, this links to my Twitter, this links to my YouTube, um, this is my Ethereum address. Um, but it's got two kind of unique things to it. Uh, it's got a publications array that gets dynamically updated. It's append only with new publications. Publications being content um, that can be text, MP3, audio, visual, a podcast, anything. Uh, Lens doesn't care where this is stored. It can be stored in AR Weave, IPFS, ceramic, uh, or, or again, storage solutions yet to be invented. Um, additionally, you can control your follow logic with a follow module. We're going to get into what that is later. Following builds the social graph and we represent following by follow NFTs. So if I want to go follow, uh, if I wanted to follow Anna, I, I would, you know, do the transaction, and if that follow succeeds, uh, I'm going to get minted a follow NFT. It's going to say this is the Anna follow NFT. Uh, I'm follower number one, so I have ID one, um, and uh, it might have other metadata. It might say that this was uh, created by this specific app, along with a signature to show authenticity. It might say that this represents a bi-directional follow, something like a Facebook friendship compared to a unidirectional Twitter follow. Uh, you could have other data in there. This is a premium follow. Um, you know, it represents that I paid for it as opposed to a free one. Um, this follow NFT contract also has built-in governance power with delegation. Uh, this allows me to plug into Ave Governor, uh, Open Zeppelin or Compound Governor, uh, or Snapshot to build social DAOs and social DAO strategies. Um, so as a creator, I can, I can pull my, my following. Um, you know, one of our engineers, Josh, does really great Solidity content on YouTube videos. You know, he could pull his Lens audience and say, should I be making more videos on, on Ave V3 or should I instead go over, uh, should I instead go over the, um, go over the, uh, you know, maybe Alchemix V2 and you can take a proper DAO vote. 
or, or conversely, you could actually have, uh, you know, no need to do a social token to organize a group. We could have uh, the profile NFT live inside of a smart contract and a DAO vote occurs and it grants somebody the ability to follow that DAO, that profile, them joining the DAO. Um, so we can have these kind of on-chain social DAOs uh, organized around a graph and interaction as opposed to a, a social token. Um, lastly, we have uh, post comments and mirrors. Um, so we can, uh, you know, we, we can, um, there's three types of publications, a standard post, that's just a reference to some content, uh, a comment, which is the same data structure as a comment as a retweet with quote. Um, so that would be, I'm referencing another piece of content and creating my own on top of it. Um, and the last is a mirror, which is our version of retweet, which is just a reference to another piece of content. Um, all of these can be fully monetized. Um, so if I post a great image, let's say of my last trip to London, um, I can say, hey, this can be minted 10 times into its own NFT. And if you mirrored it, and you got uh, somebody collected it off the mirror, minted it off the mirror, uh, there's a referral fee in order to you know, encourage good creation, uh, curation. Uh, there's a question in the chat about why we decided to make only uh, profile and follow uh, NFTs as opposed to one for each publication. A publication can turn into an NFT if, it, if it's collected, uh, but the idea is that all publications live inside the profile. Uh, so the profile is your entire feed and, and, and all of your, uh, all of your publications are there. You know, we don't want to necessarily have NFTs owning other NFTs, uh, but we allow publications to be minted into NFTs, uh, standalone NFTs, using a thing called a, a collect module. And that actually flows really great into how you can extend Lens on the smart contract level. Uh, so I spoke a little bit about modules, and, and we have three types, and I think they're really powerful. Uh, modules allow you to bring in arbitrary logic into Lens. Uh, the first one is the follow module. And this is attached on the profile. So I'm uh, davidev.eth, the wallet, and I own the at David profile. And I may set uh, a follow module, a bit of logic um, that will run some program and return uh, a Boolean answer, zero or one. And if it's one, the profile NFT gets minted. If it's zero, we revert the transaction. Um, what are some things I can do here? Well, I could have the basic situation, the free mint. Anybody can mint unlimited number of uh, follow NFTs. Uh, from for my profile. Uh, I could have a paid version. So I could say you have to send me five Matic um, in order for me to mint you a follow NFT. Um, I could say, mint me five Matic, take the Matic, deposit it into Aave, and then put the A tokens in my account and then mint the NFT. And then the last one, this is a true one that somebody in our community built as follow logic. Uh, charge five Matic for the follow, figure out the amount of gas being used, convert it to carbon credits, buy BCT from Toucan and retire it and then send the five the remaining Matic to my address, making the entire action carbon neutral. Um, arbitrary logic is arbitrary logic. You can plug into DeFi or any other smart contract. Um, and that's just for follows. Uh, reference and collect are gonna live on the per publication basis. Uh, reference uh, is if another post or publication wants to reference a given post. If I'm commenting on your post or mirroring it, in order for that transaction to succeed, it has to clear the reference module link to that post. Um, the a way to think about this is if I publish a tweet today, I like to use Twitter as an example. We're all familiar with it. If I publish a tweet today and I can set who's allowed to reply to it, think of that as your reference module. I can decide who is allowed to comment on my tweet or retweet my tweet, um, my publication. Uh, and again, I can do any type of logic. We have people who say, I can only comment on this post if I hold two board apes uh, where I hold, hold these specific board apes, number 62, 128, and 4072. Um, I can say that you have to have more than 32 FWB to comment on my post, to be a member of a community. Um, again, I can also do payments as well. Um, collect is the mint functionality. That's what turns a publication into a standalone NFT. So here's where I could define any arbitrary mint logic. I could say, here's the white list of who's allowed to mint my posts into standalone NFTs. Here's how much it costs. I could do a bonding curve. I, I can do an auction. I, I can really do anything. Um, and I can also specify what happens to the output funds. Um, a really cool example that a, a developer in our community did, um, you know, 99.9% .9 of all NFTs are sold in stable coins, uh, US dollar stable coins or ETH. Um, they created one called alternate currency collect. So if I'm a creator in Europe, I can specify that I want my, uh, I want my, uh, NFT or my publication to be for sale for 50 USDC. And then as soon as the mint occurs, it will use the 0x API to auto swap into euros. 
and put that in my wallet. And you can actually even cause the price on the sell side to be variable given the exchange rate at a given time. So that's collect. And the overall goal with Lens that I like to get, get at is we're really trying to foster a broad, diverse, and evolving social ecosystem. Everything is fully composable and transferable on-chain. That means that more than just us being able to plug in through these modules to existing Ethereum, you know, existing EVM data, other applications can plug into us, um, can plug into your social following. Um, you know, I can say you can only access this DAP, DAP or this DAO uh, if you follow the DAO or uh, if you've engaged in a certain positive way, or we can start doing snapshot strategies that reward contributors and DAOs for how they engage as opposed to necessarily what tokens they have. And we can now have a, some quantitative means of, of, of doing that uh, on chain. As I mentioned, follower NFTs have built in governance mechanisms uh, and that, that can be really interesting in terms of building these new social DAOs, a special interest here for, for DAO hack. Users can take their graph to whatever experience they want to engage in. Uh, I can take my content between any front end built on top of Lens. I can take my following to any front end built on top of Lens. Uh, the ecosystem builds itself. We called it Lens after the Lens Calaris plant, which fertilizes the own soil it grows in to encourage other plants to grow around it. And that's how we view Lens apps. Each one in the ecosystem helps the ecosystem at large by bringing in more data uh, and, and more integrations and more ways for you to share your content and as a creator for you to have more distribution. And for developers, the, the key sale here is you can focus on the experience on the front end and leave the network effects and network building up to the protocol. Uh, there have been so many times we've seen great innovations in social tech only for that company to fail to capture the market due to not having a strong social graph. We can even look as recently as the past couple of years. Clubhouse walked so Twitter spaces could run. Clubhouse couldn't grow fast enough. Um, we can go even way back in the day uh, and say that, you know, Meerkat walked so Periscope could run so that Twitch could fly. Um, we don't really remember those previous two experiments as much because they couldn't capture the graph in the same way that later ones did. More than just that, we also have an API. Um, we built our own API. It's the same tools that we actually use internally at Aave when we are building a front end that we've said we are, that is coming. Um, why did we build it? Well, social media is a long game and, and we want to make sure that the developer ecosystem has the ability for people to build who don't know solidity. Uh, I, I think that's that's pretty critical. Um, you know, we've exposed, uh, Lens protocol itself is gonna be open and decentralized. Um, we wanna make sure that people are gonna be able to build anything they want on it um, with, a, with, a, with a more familiar setting. Um, so what is in the Lens front end uh, API? You don't have to worry about indexing or querying data or reorgs or the speed of fetching data. We're built on Polygon. It's a much, much faster blockchain. You have to deal with, deal with reorg sometimes up to 200 blocks in depth. Um, you know, the graph is an option, but the graph isn't necessarily the greatest at real-time query. Uh, and for a social app, you need to have that real-time responsiveness. We have an API to help with that. You don't have to worry about pre-filling contract data or validating it, especially if you're using with SIG functions to do meta transactions or a cleaner UI UX. Um, we're using a Web2 style interface to allow people to interact with the protocol. So if you are familiar with a regular GraphQL API, something like maybe Twitter or Facebook's, you're gonna feel right at home with the Lens API. The entire graph is queryable. Our documentation at docs.lens.dev is super great. And, and all of our backend devs are regularly checking the Discord and, and will build new features on the fly if you need them. And the key thing there is there's really no huge learning curve. Just focus on what you wanna build uh, and you can build it really quick. No need to know blockchain or solidity. It helps, but at the end of the day, you know, if you know how to use the Facebook or the Twitter APIs or another GraphQL API, building with Lens is gonna be really fast. Uh, and that's part of our vision is to let people build applications um, that are gonna use the power of blockchain and the power of Web3 to create great features that an app should be able to win on its feature set alone, not just marketing itself as Web3. And that's really what we're trying to do here with the Lens API. Ideas for things to build. Uh, you can build great front ends. If you're looking for inspiration, the community manages a front end at Lenster. Uh, so I think that's alpha.lenster.xyz. Um, that's a way to play around with the social graph. Uh, you can make extensions to the protocol. Um, think about different ways you can use modules uh, to build on top. Maybe you want to build the ability for subscriptions. 
that would mean, you know, send the follow NFT to a, a smart contract uh, that, you know, has some, has some logic uh, requiring a recurring payment. Um, maybe you want to integrate a DeFi app you've built uh, into Collects. So, uh, you know, incoming creator money can be deposited in increasing your TVL. Or really kind of push this experience of social DAOs. What does it mean for a shared profile to exist? How do we do on-chain governance via a social graph and really, really think about moving away from the current model of we just have a social token that's an ERC-20. Um, I think those are some great areas to explore and I'm really looking forward to what you guys end up building. And the last thing I wanna add, you know, I, I think Stani says this a lot, the biggest thing we learned when we built the Aave protocol is you're never building alone. You're building with an ecosystem, with a community. Lens is on testnet and, and we've kept it on testnet for a while because we really wanna hear from uh, the community uh, we really want to hear the feedback. What features do you want in the contracts? What features do you want in the API? You know, we're, we're hoping to obviously freeze and go to mainnet in the next month or so. Um, but we did a hackathon. You know, we just had a, a hackathon previously with ETH Global. We're, we're here with this next one. We actually entirely revised large parts of the contracts uh, and launched a brand new test net for those features based off feedback we got from hackers in the previous hackathon. And, and we'd really love to hear from you, especially if you're building on top. You know, what are we missing? What should we add? Uh, and where else should we go? Uh, if there's any questions, I'd, I'd love to take them. Uh, if not, uh, happy hacking, everyone. Feel free to come off mute if you want to ask your questions live. I would, I could add a few things, I guess. Uh, key places to find us, uh, lens.dev uh, kind of has the overview. docs.lens.dev has some incredible great information on how to get building. Uh, and if you go to the Discord, uh, tons of different uh, places to get help. Um, our developers are always there. Uh, the URL mentioned for where to get, get a, uh, to get a, to get a, a look. Uh, I believe it's alpha.lenster.xyz is a community run front end. Um, keep in mind, we just relaunched uh, testnet three literally last night uh, based off a ton of feedback we got from ETH global hackers. And, and we'll probably do another testnet based off the feedback we get from, from you guys in the community to make sure that we're really building something that works for everybody, not just, uh, not, not just that suits you know, what we're building. Cool, we'll give it another minute for any other questions that you guys might have. If you guys have any questions, I, I'm, where I think we're, a bunch of us are in the, uh, the ETH Global Discord, I'm at davidev.eth, um, same on, on, on Twitter and on other means of communications, happy to answer questions or provide help in any way. Um, happy hacking everyone. Awesome. Well, we'll end things here then. Thank you so much, David, for taking the time to do this uh, workshop with the Dial Hacks hackers. And yeah, definitely excited to see what you guys build, especially with Lens. Um, and with that being said, we have an idea brainstorming session happening in about an hour. So if you guys are free, definitely join that if you want to um, help get some ideas for this weekend's hackathon. And otherwise, I hope everyone has a great rest of your Thursday or Friday, depending on where you